you decide to step up to this kind of power, this kind of challenge, this kind of flying, crashing, feeling, when you decide to get serious, there's only one place to come, the games of Super Nintendo. No one else creates this kind of experience, because no one else creates these kinds of games. Now you're playing with power, super power. Next! Ooh, scary. What's up guys, it's Hatayat7 in ICD Gaming bringing you another video for you guys. I hope that everybody out there is doing well. Now today I'm going to try and pull something off here, so bear with me. As you can see by the backdrop or the desktop um, wallpaper, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go into, at least partially, into the 16-bit wars. Because of course those two systems, out of those two, I'm going to be covering today for... Type R, Core Type R, is going to be the SNES 1G 1R pack. Now, I'm not going to be blabbering about how everything went down because there's a lot of people out there, there's a lot of experiences and opinions. But what I can tell you from my experience as a gamer, a younger, much younger gamer at that time, is that I was completely invested in getting the Super Nintendo, of course. Uh, it's very special to me, very dear to me, because it was my very first console that I purchased on my own on launch day. It basically gave me, to this date, it gave me the most and probably the deepest experiences that I've had uh, in gaming in terms of amount of games, quality of games. It was like, to me, it feels like the golden era, um, this 16-bit war. A lot happened. There was swinging back and forth. Uh, crazy marketing at the time, which I, to this day, I admire because Sega had really, they had the balls. I'm going to come out and say they had the balls to come out with outstanding marketing that irked me at the time, you know, being a fan of, of, of Super Nintendo and Nintendo. But it was, it was brilliant. And I know a lot of you guys out there experienced some part of it or maybe all of it. And uh, yeah, a lot of back and forth, which one, which system was better, which one was more powerful. I will be completely honest, I don't really care at this point if people agree or not. All I can say is that both systems were amazing systems, I consider, and I think the majority is on this, that Super Nintendo, even though slower than the Genesis, offered a lot, a lot more in terms of other kinds of power, you know, graphical power, sound, and some other stuff, it came on top. And eventually it reflected also on the sales because they started off with Genesis with a head start. At least my recollection, living in the States, remember, this is something that's going to vary. Opinions are opinions, and everybody, I know there's some hardcore Sega fans out there, just like there are some uh, Nintendo fans as well. Remember, I'm going to be covering Genesis later on. That's basically ready. For now, let's go into a sizzle reel so you can see how this looks on Type R with different settings, theme settings. And then I'll be back for some much needed gameplay because this one, this one rocks. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so we're back. Let's head right into it. Now, of course, when mentioning the 16-bit wars, and you mentioned the fandom, and all that cool uh, dynamic going on, you have to understand that, you know, a lot of people's opinion are reflected on sometimes, you know, where they they come from or where they experience this because I do not experience things the same way in the U.S. as perhaps in the U.K. or perhaps, you know, in Brazil or in Japan even and any other part of the world. They have more or less, you know, a lot of differences that make them, that can skew somebody's opinion or love for any given system. Before this, of course, before the Super Nintendo, you know that there was something going on brewing with the NES and the Master System, but it never really reached the heights as it did with these two, um, mostly because it was still early days and uh, a lot of the people who enjoyed this were basically nerds you know, like me, and uh, it wasn't really socially accepted at this point. So you really didn't hear too much about it, only in, in the schoolyard fights or, uh, you know, among friends or whatever. Um, so yeah, let's go into this. Now, I'm using the poster uh, theme setting here. Uh, first disclaimer, uh, I'm using box art for this. It comes standard with the 2D art for this, where you see the box art is in the Aura uh, theme setting, I believe. But since I like more of the box art, and I love especially the, the SNES box boxes and stuff, and especially the Super Famicom, I made a switch around to have it this way because this way is the way that I enjoy it. Now, second disclaimer that I'm gonna push it right out there out of the way is that right now you're seeing the best of this already comes standard with you know with uh, with the the build the main build the base build um, and you're seeing in the background the fan art now the packs as I mentioned before the 1G 1R packs do not come with fan art that is something that is being handled right now by the community by our friend Sideways Man, and uh, it's a good opportunity to go into that right now. As you can see, as I switch here to all games, uh, you see the system in the background. There are many. I was able to manage to grab a few that uh, Sideways is working on right now with a, a bunch of other guys that are pitching in and, and helping. Please, if you can, if you have spare time, go ahead and help the dude because, you know, the dude is awesome. And right now for this one, which I think a safe way to check them would be jump here on R. No, there we go. So we got a few in here from the ones that he will release eventually. Um, they're not all here because he's still working hard with uh, Extra Coconut, Ice Surfer, and Closet Nerd that are all helping to get this done for you guys to enjoy. Now, another thing, third disclaimer, I guess, is that this set will have the uh, PAL version, European version, and you're going to have a few uh, Japanese Super Famicom thrown in here for good measure as well. See if I can find a box here or a game from the Super Famicom that I can show you. Okay, right here, Acrobat Mission. 
as you can see this one is clearly it has even the super famicom art and the story and the nice background game with it so you're gonna see a few of them in here as well so that's a nice little surprise you have the full snes set plus some uh, european versions and um, a few Japanese. Of course, the Japanese versions that you will see here are also uh, ones that are fully translated, so you're not going to be like missing out on anything. Uh, and then later on, in the second wave, I, I hear there's a second wave that's going to be all, you know, Japanese and, and some other regions. So stay tuned for that later on. Now, what can I try out here? F-Zero, one of the earliest ones in the lifespan of the SNES, instantly became my favorite. It immediately showed what the system was capable of with uh, you know, the new Mode 7 uh, tricks that it had under the hood. One franchise that I am still waiting for them to make a sequel of. I'm hoping that before I die, I get to see something on the Switch or perhaps maybe on the next generation one. So let's see how that works out. Let's see if my wish comes true. <clears throat> the music is iconic. Because that theme just gets buried in your mind and it's very difficult, you know, to get it out of your mind once it's there. So far, I can say out of uh, the versions that are iterations that FC will have, there has been no like clunkers or duds or like really bad ones. Even including the the handheld ones. They're all good games. I mean if you like racing, if you don't like racing then I guess you're you're out of luck, but really nice and pretty much even though a lot of people won't see it that way, this is basically a precursor to another series that became very famous on the PlayStation um, system, which was Wipeout. And now, at the very least, we have, you know, we have uh, Fast Racing Neo and, and, and others that come very close. But there's something about F-Zero that's just, I don't know, it's something charming about the franchise and very endearing. All right, you got plenty to go through and I, I know you don't want to sit down and, and, and watch me go through uh, many laps of F-Zero. So, and these right here, the Final Fantasies, oh my God. I've covered them so much in the past and this one right here is the wake up call that I received. I did not know I was going to be a fan or was a fan of RPGs in general. I had played a few of them on the NES, mainly like the uh, big ones like Dragon Quest and the first Final Fantasy, but wasn't really hooked until this one. This one made me a believer. And again, just like when I got the SNES for the first time, I didn't look back afterwards.
multiple shots.
Let me do one last one. It's hard for me to stop once I get going with the SNES because it's just that that much fun. And it brings back so many memories. And unlike some of the other more modern systems, there's very... I had very few, if any, bad memories. I mean, the only bad memory I can associate with, with this, with playing this system was basically at that time you had places where you can, like mom and pop shops, where you can go and, and, and trade in your game for credit for another game or, um, or buy them used or whatever, was getting the really bad games, you know, and trying them for the first time once you purchased them. That, that kind of sucked, but aside from that, all right, let me do a little Killer Instinct here. A favorite of JJ, shout out JJ, hope you're doing well. And another in the many highlights of the SNES. And believe me, guys, even though I kind of skew more towards uh, Nintendo consoles, uh, both from the past and present, I will give Sega Genesis its due because, like I said, I got it. I purchased it myself. I even got the Sega CD later. I missed out on the Saturn, but at least a close friend of mine uh, got it, and I got to enjoy a lot of the the best US games that were available at the time. And later, you know, one of my favorites, the Dreamcast came out as well. I skipped over the 32X because it really wasn't, it really wasn't my calling. But yeah, I also became a, a Sega fan as well. So I respect, even as a Nintendo fan, I respect what uh, Sega has always brought to the table. So, Okay, if I follow up, a linker with a strong one. I don't want to match buttons with this game. This game will match button and you're dead. That's it. Simple as that. There you go. Let I do that. Kinda, sorta, one. That was quick. Alright, I'm gonna do one more round and close up the video. There you go. That's the linker. That's the one or the opener. I mean, I can't. I can't. I can't fall asleep with with Jago. Jago is a he's a badass. Oh.
They go mess me up. All right, guys. So, yeah, that's going to be all for this one. There are a ton of games here to go through. So you do yourselves a favor, pick this up. Because this one is one of the big ones, one of the classic ones. And I will say the same thing when I come around to do the Genesis one. Uh, very soon, I'm going to be covering some hand handhelds as well. Because we cannot forget about those. Those were a very important part of gaming history as well. Ah, here's a nice one. So yeah, let me get out of here because if not, I will not end the video. And I know you guys are not going to go through that long ass slog of me blabbering. So that's it, guys. Uh, head over to the core discord and score yourself the Super NES 1G1R pack. The 1GR, the 1G1R, sorry about that, 1G1R team is hard at work at getting those systems ready. And of course, once again, uh, please help out uh, Sideways Man with uh, fan art. Those of you that have the time and really have like the passion for art can really help for the enjoyment of others with the build. So until next time, guys, take care and uh, I'll see you.